I asked on Twitter yesterday, what are people's favorite tips for writing JavaScript faster? And I got some amazing responses. So I'm gonna show you the top five that can have an impact for you as a JavaScript developer right now. And I think for the last one, people will either love it or they'll hate it. So when we get to that point in the video, let me know what you think. All right, so let's dive into these five tips for writing JavaScript faster. The first one is to use your tab key, or at least that's how someone phrased it to me. And I had to clarify, what do you mean by using your tab key? And the person responded with IntelliSense inside of your editor. And I think this is 100% true. So if I'm in VS Code, I've got open a Quokka document. This is like a live scratch pad for JavaScript. It's by far my favorite way to just test JavaScript really quickly. And I use it all the time in my demos. But if I start to type document, so think front end JavaScript where we're in the browser, I get IntelliSense as I'm typing this, right? It's like you can see the things that I can uh, that I can select or that I can use. I can press enter or tab on document. And then if I want to get an element by ID, for example, I can say get element and hey, it pops up. So now I can just press enter on that element. I can then say this is the demo element and so on. So IntelliSense is a daily thing that we take advantage of inside of JavaScript, whether it's JSON, dot parse, you can see the IntelliSense popping up here. Anything that you do for the browser and node in I don't know, whatever JavaScript, take advantage of IntelliSense because it can write the majority of the code for you. Now, number two is to define what kind of code or prepackaged code your editor can take care of for you. So what does that mean? Well, I have snippets that I, a few snippets that I've created that will help me do things faster. So if we actually show this snippet again, let's say we have const demo equals and then document get element by ID demo. This is a pretty common thing we do with vanilla JavaScript. We get the element by the ID and then we name that thing, probably the variable, probably the same thing. So what I did is create a snippet inside of VS Code. I'll show you this in a second. But if I type get ID, I've got a snippet called get ID and what it does when I press enter or tab, it now gives me two tab stops where I can enter in information. So if I wanted demo two, for example, notice it updated this text in two different places and I didn't have to write any of this other code. So I just saved myself about 70, 75% of writing inside of here just by having snippets. Now this is a specific one that I created. So if I open up the command palette here and look at my snippets, configure user snippets, and we'll go to javascript.json. I have a few of these, so I have a custom uh, a custom one for React state and React, or use state and React, a for loop, the get element by ID, query selector, so instead of typing out this whole long string, I type QSEL or QSA, event listeners. So I've got a few in here that I created custom myself, but another thing that you can do is install extensions or snippet or install extensions, which are snippets or half snippets. So I'm a big fan of Astro. I'm actually creating a course on Astro that you can find at astrocourse.dev if you're interested. But here's a snippets extension for Astro. So it'll generate a bunch of stuff for me. Let's see what other ones I have in here. I've got the ES7 React Redux React Native snippets. I use this every day. I've got a JavaScript extent, uh, snippets extension they make extensions that have, I keep confusing extensions and snippets. They have extensions that have amazing set of snippets that you don't have to write yourself that you can use on a daily basis and help speed up your code infinitely. So another thing that you might have noticed inside of here is when I was typing document.get element right here, notice that this is populating some code in here for me. Where does this come from? Well, I can tab and I can accept this and now all this code is written for me. Now, in this case, it's not something that I specifically wanted. So it's kind of a, I wouldn't choose this, but I'm just kind of showing you the IntelliSense that I'm getting here from GitHub Copilot. Now GitHub Copilot now is a paid product. So I'm paying $10 a month and what GitHub Copilot does, it has intelligence about the code that I may be trying to write based on the project that I'm in, based on other code and the file that I'm working on, based on the name of the function. So if I say a comment like a function that takes two number arguments and returns the sum of them named sum. Now, I probably could have written this function faster than typing it out, but if it's a more complicated function, I can now come down to return uh, to the next line and then tab, tab, 
and now I've got that function written. So GitHub Copilot is absolutely incredible. It's infinitely better than I ever thought it would be. So I highly recommend checking out GitHub Copilot or you can check out something like tab nine, which is a free or has a free tier alternative. So there are options out there, but look for extensions that can give you kind of AI IntelliSense for the code that you're writing. If you can afford GitHub Copilot or, or if you can convince your manager to pay for it, highly recommend using GitHub Copilot. It has changed the way that I write code by far. Now, the next thing I have is to plan for errors. And what does that mean? Well, where you get slowed down is when you write code that isn't very protective of itself, and then you have issues, then you have to go back and fix them. So if you plan for these errors beforehand, you can start to uh, prevent some of the back and forth. So for example, let's say we have a function capitalize. And this is gonna take in a string, and then we want to return the capitalized version of this. GitHub Copilot is already doing the work for us. Again, that's great. We take the first character, we convert it to uppercase, and then we get the rest of the string and return it. That's great. But what happens when we now call capitalize with nothing? Well, this is going to throw an error because we're passing nothing, which then equates to by default undefined. And then we're trying to call care car at function on undefined, which doesn't exist. There's no properties of undefined. So it's gonna throw an error in here. So what I'm getting to is you should be doing checks on your input to make sure your functions are able to work appropriately. So you could do something like if no string return string, for example. So if you pass an undefined, you will get back undefined. So you need to be considering what these inputs are and what you can do to make sure that this stuff is valid. Now, another uh, property of this is, or another example of this is like, say, hello to person. And let's take in a person object. And then we will uh, console log. We don't need to capitalize this. Just kind of fixing this. We'll call uh, first name. All right, so we're assuming that this person object has a first name property, but in this case, we could call say hello to person and we get the same issue because we're passing in undefined. There is no first name property. So one of the things that you could do is use the optional chaining here. That's going to, that's going to verify whether or not this thing exists before trying to access this property. Now logging out hello undefined, not what you want, but at least you're checking and preventing errors. So you should be thinking about your errors before they happen as best you can and address those before you have to come back and fix code later. Now, this is the one that gets really interesting. This is number five and you'll probably either love this or hate it, but one of the ways that you fix this problem is to use TypeScript. So people love TypeScript. I love TypeScript myself. Let's see if we can do a new TypeScript file. Let's copy over this whole thing here and let's get rid of our check and let's just uh, kind of leave this like so. So if we define an interface person and we say this has a first name string property, and then we say that this should take in a, a parameter that matches the interface of person, now we can safely assume that this property is going to exist. I even get IntelliSense now going back to the previous suggestion of first name. So with TypeScript, you'll get better IntelliSense, you'll get better knowledge of knowing that this property is going to exist on this object. And then you're also gonna get the big red flag here that says this should pass in a person object. So we can say uh, first name equals, and then sure, John. So using TypeScript, I've had this comment in a lot of my videos in the past where it's like five tips for JavaScript. And then they're like, just do TypeScript instead. So people will hate this if you consider this not to be JavaScript, or if you really don't wanna learn TypeScript, but there are infinite advantages to using TypeScript when you get comfortable with it. And I think it's probably the ultimate example in here of how to speed up your workflow with JavaScript is simply to use TypeScript. Now, I have a few meta examples at the end of this. So those are the five examples. Use IntelliSense, use Snippets, use Copilot or something similar, plan for errors and use TypeScript. There's a few meta in here that I think I'll just add on. So if you're curious, so the first one is to, to focus on one task at a time. And these are kind of just like general programming pieces of advice. But if you try to do too much, it's easy to get overwhelmed, lose track of what you're doing and not be as efficient because you're kind of bouncing around between things. So as you take on tasks, as you take on stories and your sprints and stuff like that, make sure that you're focusing on one task at a time so that you can nail that and then devote all your energy to the next one. 
Another thing that will help with this is to do some planning beforehand. What is it that you're trying to create? What sort of variables and state do you need? What sort of logic do you need to work with that stuff? Plan and think through this in your head before you start writing code and you'll be that much better prepared to then write that code when you get to that point because you have a better idea of what you're doing in your head. Another thing that someone said, which is very obvious, is to practice. The more you write code, the better you're gonna be, the faster you're gonna be able to do it. So if you're a beginner and you're frustrated by how slow you're writing code, know that this is gonna come with time and experience. So don't stop, just continue to practice and get better. And the last thing I have for you is probably the biggest thing and all these relate to is let your IDE do the work. In this case, I use VS Code. Other people have other editor preferences, that's great. Whatever your editing environment is, whatever your IDE, your integrated developer development environment is, let it do the work. Use IntelliSense, use snippets, use extensions, use TypeScript, like error hinting and things. Do take advantage of all the things that your editor gives you because it gives you a ton. And that ultimately is the best developer tool you have in your toolbox is your actual editor. So those are five tips and some metal ones for writing JavaScript faster. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think and what other tips you would add to this in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.